this uh, this uh, finance bill has been presented at a time when uh, the revival from the pandemic days is still an ongoing job and we are focusing on a sustained growth recovery with a predictable taxation regime and ensuring that the newer challenges which are before us whether at the time of the budget presentation i hadn't taken on board the omicron and now we are also facing the situation of a full blown war in ukraine which is not some war in some corner of the world but it is seem to be having impact on all countries like the way the pandemic had but this impact is disruption to very many supplies the value chains are all broken newer markets are emerging at the same time old markets are all caught up in a situation where nothing is normal so you you are actually in a situation where like the way during the pandemic we came up with a budget and then came the second wave this time we came up with a budget so that continuity in recovery will be aimed at and then came omicron now we also have a war whose impact is being felt by all of us however if we just go back to the realities which hold good for the budget of last year and the budget of this year and therefore reflection in the finance bill is that we have not taken taxation as a route for mobilizing resources i said this in the lok sabha i was uh, pleasantly surprised to hear very many members here also referring to my response there but that response is a uh, uh, well thought out response a response which is a true response fact based response in that in the last year we did not fall back on any increase in tax in the name of covid tax or in the name of any other element of tax to have the resource mobilized for the sake of meeting the challenges of recovery so did we in this budget as well so i want to highlight that fact that the clear understanding and direction by the honorable prime minister was the budget shall not draw on resources by taxing people at this time when recovery is the most important element and that we should find resources and uh, fully continue with a predictable recovery that we were aiming at and uh, sustained recovery for growth was the point which was underlined and in that context therefore i repeat what i said in the lok sabha that the oecd report has clearly shown that about 32 countries had increased various tax rates during the pandemic they could have raised the personal income or corporate income or environment environment related taxations or health related taxes or excise duties but they were large economies developed economies not so developed economies all of whom resorted to increasing in tax we did not in spite of all the speculation which was going on uh, in the media as well so no tax was increased for our uh, recovery process to be funded or aimed so in spite of all the uncertainty and in spite of all the self doubting eminent persons who have been commenting saying no indian economy has a problem nobody is realizing those in the government don't know how to handle the economy and so on i like to place before you figures which actually depend on the judgment of people who deal with money big money and who are dealing with big money across the board anywhere in the world and which is reflected in the fdis the fdi inflow into india sir in fy21 
was 81.72 billion dollars us dollars in fy20 it was 74.39 billion dollars india has continued to remain in the top 5 fdi recipient countries and this is a uncetad untad report i'd like to say that in the 7 years and 9 months of prime minister modi's government till december 2021 the fdi inflows into india has been 500.5 billion dollars and that is about 65% higher than the fdi inflows during the entire 10 year regime of the upa so if 10 years of upa which is normally touted as very good we did this we did that we've controlled everything we were incentivizing the growth of the economy could draw only some amount which was 65% lesser than what we've drawn in spite of the kind of comments which have been made against this government saying you don't know how to manage the economy i think that reflects how honestly both the indian investors and also investors from abroad have trusted the economic management of this government under prime minister modi and 10 years se zyada 65% zyada hamare liye fdi 7 saal aur 9 mahine mein hi aa aa gaya hai is desh mein so i now go responding to the observations made by eminent speakers most uh members of the house so that it covers at a go the issues raised by individuals but at the same time answer those issues which have been raised by that member but also equally by others there were questions raised by senior member shakti singh gohil that the covid 19 emergency response and health system preparedness package which was given 15000 crore has it actually been utilized what is happening and so on so the union cabinet on 22nd, 22nd april 2020 itself approved significant investments in the health sector 15000 crores were allotted the funds funds which were sanctioned were to be utilized in three phases and for immediate covid emergency response uh mechanisms particularly for that 7774 crores were provisioned and the rest for medium term support which is about one to four years uh, programs which will be taken up and all of them taken up in mission mode approach so we have attended through from 2020 itself for funding uh, emergency response mechanisms and uh, infrastructure which is so required for that also health related covid measures being the issue of concern 23123 crores have been again provided for a second phase of health preparedness packages and this is also gone through and this was appri- uh, approved by the cabinet on july 8 2021 so one was uh, april 2020 the next was in 2021 we have given 23123 crores again that is for health preparedness so pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana through which insurance uh, schemes for health workers was launched increased investment again for public health had been spent setting up of uh, infectious disease hospitals at the block level i remember some honorable members referring saying it's all right you have aims aims like facilities but does that go down to the block level it was specifically aimed at spe- uh, setting up infectious disease hospitals at the block levels integrated public health labs and so on 900 crores have been provided to department of Bio- biotechnology for research and development purely for covid vaccine and then 1.1 lakh crore loan guarantee scheme for covid affected sectors has also been given of which 50000 crores was purely for the health sector so uh, each budget since after the pandemic lockdown was announced 
has been focusing on building health infrastructure abilities and, and the uh, actual uh, grounding of health infrastructure. Budget 2021, uh, the outlay for health and well-being was 2,23,846 crores for the year 21-22, which is now coming to an end. And this year's B, uh, 94,452 crores have been given with an increase of 137%. So there has been continuously, and this allocation for mission portion, which is meant for nutrition, and also Swast Bharat Yojana, which gets 64,180 crores uh, over a period of six years. So specifically issues related to health emergency response system, health emergency infrastructure, the allocations have been steady from 2020 and substantial in order that health infrastructure get strengthened. So I'm looking around only to make sure the uh, issues raised by the members and those members are present here uh, because somewhat uh, some of the members are not here, but the issues raised by them are important. Uh, there is a kind of a practice which I've got used to in the Lok Sabha where the speaker has, uh, of course that shouldn't matter here, but I would just say it, uh, saying if the member who raised the issue is not here, you don't need to uh, respond to them. But I would still think because for the benefit of the House here, um, even if the member is absent, I would want to respond to it because the issues raised have been very uh, important. Sir, member Amar Patnaik had raised, uh, based on his, uh, I think, vast experience in dealing with uh, accounts and uh, also being uh, very familiar with public accounts and so on, has raised very uh, critical questions about cesses and surcharges. Cess and surcharge having become very much more significant, his concern was has it led to a situation where the state's share in the devolution has come down? I would uh, seek your indulgence, sir, sir. In that, I would go through a bit of an elaborate uh, explaining it in three different uh, silos because it's a very important uh, aspect of the debate. And I think all of us, every member would want to know about it and I would rather put this up front so that people know the arguments which every now and then, even during the question hour or otherwise, all of us give as response. It may sound, many people, without the narration here, it looks as if we are just saying, no, no, we have not. But actually, I'll put, put before this August House the facts which govern. So as per Article 271 of the Indian Constitution, all taxes and duties except surcharges and cesses levied for, after all, they are levied for specific purposes, shall be distributed to the union and uh, the, between the union and the states. 